This is a tutorial to show you how to model a screw or bolt. Uh, there could be a number of approaches on this and what I'm going to do is I'll uh, create a cylinder, a polygon cylinder, and the idea is that I will extrude out um, these vertical lines and then um, twist it around. So I, I'll, I'll pull out the ridges straight and then twist them afterwards. So I'll start by adjusting some of the inputs on the cylinder here and uh, let's get a little taller. I'll do eight. Oops, that's too tall. How about four? That's a little bit more like what I had in mind. And um, I'm going to need a lot more detail in the height because uh, it's going to need that detail to be able to twist it and have the twisted shape smooth. So I'm going to increase the subdivision height to 60. And uh, now the catch is that I need to select each row of faces and that would be difficult to do from this angle. So instead I'm going to do it from the top. Hold down the spacebar for hotbox. Click in the middle. Top view. F for frame selected. I'll scroll back out a little bit. And then I'll just do a right mouse click face and then I'll do a little marquee select on each of these uh, rows of faces just getting every other row so if you look now um, I've got every other row but I don't want these center ones so back to the top view I'm going to hold control and marquee select and deselect all of those so now I have each row of faces selected. I'm going to use the extrude tool, extrude face, and scroll around to where I can see my manipulator tool and pull that out so I get those ridges. So there are my ridges and you can play with how deep but maybe a touch more. Okay, something like that. And uh, if you want, you could also um, maybe scale them in a bit so that they're not quite as thick. That might look a little better later. We'll see. Okay, now uh, I'm going to go back to object mode, right mouse click, object mode, select the object. From the animation menu set, I'm going to go to create deformers, nonlinear, twist. And this has created a whole separate uh, node called the twist node. You can see it here in the outliner, the twist handle. And if I hide my polygons, I'm just going to go show polygons. You can see it's just this uh, object here. It's got the line in the middle and the circle on the top and bottom. Let's show that again. And to control the twist, uh, I'll just click on twist in the inputs. And you see you have start angle, end angle, high bound and low bound. The high bound and low bound are the height of these circles. So that's the area, the portion of the surface that will be affected by the twist. And then you can either adjust the start angle or the end angle. In this uh, case, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to click on end angle and middle mouse drag and just keep going until the threading has the amount of twist I want. I could do more or less just depending on my preference. It's always Good to look at some reference images to see what you want but uh, so this um, this is more of a bolt as it has the same width at the top and bottom uh, so I'm going to be calling this a bolt and then I'm going to do um, the top of the bolt I'll just do another cylinder and move this up um, flatten it out a little bit Maybe something like that thickness. And if I want to get it wider without getting thicker, I can just grab this guy and something like that. Um, but I don't want so many facets, so I'm going to click on the inputs here, click on that, and middle mouse drag. And maybe six sided. Again, reference would be good at this point. Uh, so then I'm going to move this down. And uh, there you go. That's a bolt. Maybe this could be bigger. Something like that. And of course you can adjust any of the size, width, amount of twist, all that kind of stuff to adjust it to taste. To me that looks kind of thick for its height. And maybe the ridges are too big. Um, 
um, if I wanted to get sort of fancy with it, I could click on this and go back into the poly extrude face node. And if I scroll down, I can see the local translate Z is 0 0.207. So I could type in something like, say, 0.1 and uh, adjust the depth of that. And you can see it's uh, shallower. Um, I can also look at the, um, the scale X. And maybe I want it a little thicker. Let's see, 0.8 for that. So the, the ridges are thicker. Maybe, maybe I'll go to full one unit on that. So it's more kind of even with the, the down arrow areas. Uh, so that could be an approach to making a bowl. I think if I wanted to make a screw, let's try this. Um, I will, I want to make it pointy at the bottom and there's a number of ways to do this. One would be with a lattice and the other would be with a uh, flare. So I am very fond of the flare tool. So I'm going to go create. And actually, it's probably a good idea before you do this to delete history, just so we get deleting history. What it'll do is get rid of the twist and uh, but keep the shape of the twist. So edit delete by type history. So the twist handle is gone now, but we've kept that shape because sometimes multiple deformers can interfere with each other. So create deformers, nonlinear flare. And flare is very similar to uh, the twist. Um, but what you can do is pinch it at the top or bottom and then have a curve through the middle. So uh, we just want to pinch it at the bottom, which should be end flare, I believe. Nope, that's the top. So I'll do start flare. And I've been clicking a middle mouse dragging, but you can also just type a number in there. Start flare. And that looks a little bit weird. Um, maybe go like 0.2 or something, so it's not quite so sharp. 0.1. And uh, yeah, it looks a little odd. So you know, I might want to go bigger on the ridges. I can adjust the curve too, so that it you know has sort of a curve throughout if I want. I think the problem is is that it shouldn't be so um, thick at the top. Um, I could try. Now that I've deleted history, I can't really adjust any of that stuff backwards. So um, I think the problem is it starts out so thick at the top. Let's go back. I'm just undoing to before I deleted history. And um, let's go see if it'll let us change the radius at this point. It might not like this. Well, it's pretty happy about it. Um, so that seems better to me now. And uh, I'll go ahead and adjust the, the ridges are now too big for this much thinner screw now. So um, let's uh, adjust the, I believe it was this one that adjusted that. Oops. Okay, that looks better to me. And then I'll just go ahead and try and layer a couple deformers. It just, if when you start combining these weird things sometimes happen. Let's see what happens. Flare, and I guess it was start flare. And yeah, I think part of what's looking a little bit weird is how it's distorting the ridges. Um, it's doing okay combining these two. Maybe we want more twist. Um, just increasing that twist. And I also think what I might do is adjust on the, let's grab our flare handle. Uh, I might uh, adjust the high bound or low bound. so that it doesn't, you know, narrow in throughout. Um, and you can also just pick the whole thing and move it too, like if I don't want it to affect as much. Oh, sorry, that's the twist handle. I meant to grab the flare. 
I can move the whole thing. You can see it's it's uh, adjusting less. But in that case, then I'd want to move up the low bound to there. And let's go all the way to zero with these guys. And I can adjust the curve of that bottom there. Well, that looks kind of funny. OK. Yeah, something like that. I would change the head of this now, obviously. Still looks a little funny, I think. But uh, yeah, cardinal sin of not using reference for this stuff. So the key thing, again, is if you use reference. But I think I, the point is I've given you the sort of some tools to be able to design one of your own um, following reference just by adjusting those various controls. Okay.